Noah, you have a big impact on the offensive line. Connor Riley says you're the leader and you have such a big impact and your journey you walked on from Butler and you worked hard to get to where you are right now. Just what do you have to say on the position you now have on this team? Um, well, I think the first thing is that um, – like, I appreciate what Coach Riley's saying um, and everything like that. But it's really, I think the growth is our group as a whole. Um, because, you know, you want to be a great group. You, it's not just about one person, whether that's a leader or, you know, one person being a great player, you know, especially on the offensive line. You got to have all five. Um, and right now, I think the most, you know, the thing that gets me the most fired up about in our group especially is that it's it's kind of everyone right now. Um, just my personality, I think, I mean, you know me, Adam, we went to high school together. I kind of, I talk quite a bit. So I may get a little bit more credit than, uh, than maybe I deserve on some of that leadership stuff. But it's, it's, it's really been our whole group um, really coming together and just rallying around each other. Um, and you know what, I am, I am a senior and I do play center, so naturally you know i i do i do want that role of being the guy and being the leader but um it's about the whole group it's it's always about the whole group it's always about the whole team and the offensive line plays a big part in the running game and the running game is what the off whole offense runs through and the offensive line is kind of inexperienced and young as a whole just what do you have to say about this offensive line um well I think just one thing I've always thought about, because, I mean, I've been hearing that ever since the season ended last year about how inexperienced we are. But, you know, at some point, Scott France had to start his first game. He didn't walk in as a 30-game starter. You know, at some point, you have to be a little inexperienced. And I will gladly trade a little bit of inexperience for a group of guys who are just playing uh, hungry and playing driven and playing together. And I think that's what we have. We have, we have a lot of guys who, um, you know, I don't think anyone in our room was satisfied with, you know, the results of last year, both personally and both as a whole team. Um, and I think, you know, that is more important than necessarily, you know, having a few games under your belt. Uh, there's obviously going to be growing pains. That's, that's football and that's life. Um, but I'm I'm super excited to to go through those growing pains with this group because I think we there is just a a ton of talent in this in, in our room especially and uh, I, I I really I really could care less about experience uh, it, it just it's something that yeah it's it's we're inexperienced but we got to move on from it and I think I think we are I think we're moving in the right direction. Kellis. Hey Noah, did uh, did Coach Brad ask you to wear that shirt? Uh, no, he didn't. But uh, I, I'm a, I'm a always represent Butler. Gotcha. For sure. Um, I know Skyler mentioned to me in the off season that you and him had taken some time uh, before all this happened started to at least you know work on the center quarterback exchange and start building a repertoire there. Uh, how did you you know go about continuing that when you couldn't? Couldn't meet and do it for a while. Yeah, so uh, for me, I'd, I'd, I had uh, – I'd always kind of gotten a taste of playing center. Like, I think my sophomore year of high school, I was playing a little bit of center, and, uh, and then we got into our first, like, contact camp, and I just did awful. And I got moved to tackle, and I played tackle for the rest of my career at high school. And then when I got to Butler, I was kind of playing – I was mostly playing guard, playing a little bit of center, and then I just kind of stuck at guard – so, uh, so the first time I ever really, you know, got, got, the, got the rock in my hand was, uh, was last spring here. And uh, the biggest thing is just becoming comfortable with the ball in your hand because that's all it is. You know, snapping can be it – can, it can get in your head. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do, um, snapping and blocking. But for me, when I looked at, okay, I don't have spring ball, I don't have all this time with Skyler to, uh, to get our CQs. So I'm gonna handle my business because I don't want that to even be, be a thought in my head of oh I gotta worry about snapping because I just want to be able to play fast and play confident. 
And so uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, John Honus, who was a Wichita guy when I was back home in quarantine. He'd come over every night and we'd go in my backyard and uh, just snap. I taught him a couple of the plays, like our big plays that we would run. He'd give me a defensive front. He'd give me calls and we'd just – we'd get five or six snaps, one length of the fence, down and back, you know, just – just trying to replicate those in-game reps. And uh, I think it's really paid off. Um, really, really, really uh, exciting to see hard work pay off. You know, you always hear that. And then to feel it is a good, it's, a, it's very rewarding. Scott? Yeah, hey Noah. Um, talking with Scott Franz recently, he said that you play with a chip on your shoulder. Where does that come from? Uh, I think that's just offensive line. I think you look at any any great offensive lineman, they're always playing hard. They always play super physical. They always they always finish. Um and for me that I think a chip on your shoulder is is uh really more of a mental thing. And for me that's something that that I always continue to try to focus on myself is to uh is to just have a have a really good mentality about stuff and some days are are better than others some days you know yesterday I was at practice and I was kind of thinking man I'm tired of camp and then that voice in my head that usually you know you guys probably get it too when you're working out usually that voice in your head's telling you yeah you're right this is gonna suck but yesterday it was saying no man let's go and I think that is more that that chip on my shoulder mentality of just you know I, I want to do whatever I can to make this team, you know, compete for a big 12 championship, compete for a national championship. Cause I don't see, I don't see any reason not to reach for those goals. And so, and for me being an undersized guy, I got to play a little bit harder. That's just, that's just how it is. So that's what I try to do. And real quick. I heard you have a hidden talent. You know, every line from Anchorman. What's yeah. The, what's your favorite line from Anchorman? Uh, favorite line from Anchorman. I got to say, I don't know how much I can – I don't know if I can give you my real favorite ones uh, <laughs> on this or, without it being NSFW, but uh, I thought that the one, the uh, I have an urgent and horrifying news story. Everybody, please shut up, stop what you're doing and listen. And then he cannonballs into the pool. I like that. But uh, really, any Will Ferrell movie. He's the funniest man alive. Good luck to you this season. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Got time for a couple more. We'll go Arnie and then Derek. Yeah, uh, just uh, curious about about the spring. You talked about missing that time, and especially for a, a unit where it's so important to build cohesiveness. How far? How much did that set you guys back? And do you feel like you've been able to make it up for for lost time there? Yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, missing 15 practices of getting to go against, you know, our defense, like White, Hubert, Khalid Duke, Drew Wiley, Eli Huggins, Eli Sullivan, Jay Ball, like that, that, that's tough. Obviously, you're going to get a lot better from that. But something that I'll, I'll always harken back to and something that we talk about in our room is uh, when we had that, when we had that month long for bowl prep, we would do like these developmental sessions kind of at the end and it kind of be like a, a scrimmage sort of scenario. And, uh, our group was kind of taking the majority of the reps in that. So I think having about a month of taking heavy reps with each other really, really put us in a good place. And obviously losing spring ball hurts. But uh, I think so far this fall camp, I mean, there's growing pains and we have a lot of, a lot of younger guys like uh, Taylor Portier has been doing really good. Um, Taylor Warner, Whit Mitchum. Carver Willis, those guys are are all three freshmen who I've been really impressed with. Uh, I look at a guy like Ben Adler, I think he's taking a huge jump, and uh, Christian Duffy. But we all, I mean, we all are still going through growing pains. I mean, there's there's been multiple plays this camp where I'll go the wrong way on something. That's just that's just you need those reps, and that's something that you know we still got a month till our first game, so we're gonna keep chipping away at it. We're not gonna get. We're not going to have a bad practice and get down on ourselves. We're going to – it's a process. Coach Riley always tells us it's a process. You know, working on your first step, working on your hand placement, working on your communication. So, uh, 
you know, we lost those reps, but we can't do anything about it. We just got to move forward. As a, as a leader also, um, when you did have that time off, was there anything you tried to do to sort of keep the group together during that yeah. organizing stuff? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, we would do, uh, you know, we would hop in some, some Zooms, like with, uh, with Sky T would get on with us and we'd just watch whether it be like, you know, the OU game or whether it be the uh, Baylor game. We'd watch that and we'd talk, okay, who's the mic ID here? What's the front here? What are you doing here, left tackle? Or we'd go, we'd go back and watch fall camp from last year or a third down period in the, in the fall. Um, and so just trying to get – trying to – since we're missing out on those physical reps – trying to get those mental pictures so that when we do get them live, we can be just, just that much quicker about it. All right, Derek, finish us off. Yeah, you guys have been able to go up against some of the defensive linemen so far in fall camp, of course. Uh, is it like an – are you seeing an obvious jump in progress from some of the players on that side of the ball that you go up against in practice every day? Yeah, uh, I got to give a shout-out to Drew Wiley. I don't think he gets near enough credit, uh, near enough as much credit as he deserves for that man is is a absolute grinder and he's an absolute just bull in a china shop in there. Uh, and he's been doing really good. I think Eli Huggins has 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 really really improved and has been he's been tough to block this summer or this fall. Um, obviously, I, I was in here when you guys were asking why about Khalid Duke and Khalid's been been really good and it's it's uh I mean you guys all know how good of a player Elijah Sullivan is so it's always it's always fun to you know get up get up to that second level and try to block him and you know and I think we all have that mindset where you know we're the group that everyone thinks you know is inexperienced is the biggest question mark so let's go out and attack these dudes and we might we might get our butts kicked on a play but we're going to come right back that next play and I, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just iron sharpens iron. And if I'm going against a really good player in practice, it's only going to make games easier for me. So it's kind of my thoughts about it. Cooper BB was a true freshman last year that kind of had a lot of chatter about him. And he's now a redshirt freshman. What kind of things did you see from him that everyone else did that kind of had the buzz about him instantly? Yeah, uh, I think the first thing you notice about Cooper is that he's a super hard worker, super, super hard worker, and every, everything starts with that. Um, and on top of that, the, that kid is really, really athletic for his size and really explosive and very fluid, and he's also super coachable. You know, Coach Riley tells him one thing one day to work on, and the next day, you know, you can see that he's clearly trying to improve on that. And I think on the offensive line, you know, being coachable is one of the things that makes you great. Um, and Cooper definitely has that. And I, he's going to have a really big year this year. And uh, I'm really excited to have him in our room. And I really appreciate him as a, as a person and a player. All right, Noah, thanks. All right, appreciate you guys.